is what we he does. We are set. We are ready. <laughs> yeah. But we are here. We are. We got our first guest. I'm Ever. So, I'm so excited. I'm so you are sorry. The first <laughs> guest. I'm the first guest. You are I'm the, the first best guest. you can do. Yes. And we have done amazing. <laughs> and what a high Right out the mark. gate. The, I don't know. Like this, this is, is, No, no. The pace is absurd now. Yeah, no. Wow. I mean, I disagree. In fact, I feel bad Firmly. for you. Firmly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to have to endure Yeah, this. what am I doing here, guys? I got to go. I was just on TV yesterday. I no, I'm just kidding. money? Yeah. <laughs> no crafts. No. no, you guys are catching me at <laughs> such a weird here. time. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's been wild. Like, oh, I man. can't. I'm you're so happy to be here talking to you both. Such like, a news run you're in right now. Yeah, it's insane. I've never had anything like this. Are we part of the media tour? Yeah, absolutely. This, <laughs> this is, is the big, press big, this big is your push. This is Jesus and Meryl part of the media <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is I'm it. trying to diversify. This is the urban stop. Yeah. I'm trying to get this the urban <laughs> stop. Uh, we are this joined. is what I was afraid of. Star this like is Brooklyn. why I was scared to <laughs> you come. Know me. I know. You know me. Like, what am I doing? I'm entering the dragon's den. by none other than Jason Schwimmer. This guy is was formerly... The voice of DW. That's Laura true. Or Winifred herself. That was me. The first bad kid in animated history. <laughs> like, when we talk it, like, Bart was not that bad in, like, 89. Who? It, it, Bart. In oh, Simpsons. oh, I thought you said Bart's Mark. Yeah. No, no. no <laughs> Bart. Like Mark. Mark. Yeah. Mark. 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 It's not ringing true. Yeah. No. The Bart. Moose from the Rangers? <laughs> Marky Mark? The Mark. Oh, he was definitely bad in the 80s. If we're talking bad in the 80s, it's Marky Mark. So Bart Simpson as a cartoon character, I think, was a good high water mark for like, the, the piece of yeah. shit kid. Right, and in right. In terms of animated series, second only to The Simpsons is Arthur, right? Yes, that's in right. In length, yes. I did not know that. I that's know. thing I learned. Yeah. So let's, let's. Is that like part of the dogma that you have to sex? preach from leaving the cast it's, like, it's everything way, did you know <laughs> <laughs> no it's it's what i'm trying to do to legitimize what i'm doing because i'm like no no no, no like arthur matters and here's why <laughs> facts no yeah. i thought it was a campaign for arthur like oh, at no. first i thought it was simply, oh is that what it looks like like what i'm doing no, you mean at first when i first saw it Whoa. i didn't know anything behind it. i'm like i just heard that uh, the canceling is like on their last season yeah. and then i'm like oh is this like an extension is this like are, are they, they diving into they the pod to world? To new, to yeah. Netflix? I was like, is this going to be ebooks or like what's going on? And then when I read the article, like, I was minute. like, hold on. Uh, Wait a second. Then I see the picture. <laughs> I looked at, I seen the picture before. Did not even realize it was together. Jason. <laughs> and I've known this guy for a couple years because he was working with me uh, at much, much digital studios. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And he you was like my go-to guy. Nobody tells me anything in three months. <laughs> <laughs> I just come in cold and have to it's do so all my own It's so much better to reveal these things on camera. Yeah. Look at your face okay, light up. Using me for content. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. So we've devolved. Well, that's through. what you guys are, have me here for. It's fine. <laughs> well, well, this it's is a just, reciprocal relationship. Uh, you yeah. Know what? It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> but yeah, we worked together, and yeah. then he had me on his podcast. Oh my god, that's years right. And years ago, that's right. There was a podcast before this. Podcast? There was my first foray. So the job he's talking about at much, I like it wasn't super. Like I had time. Yeah, and I really wanted to do something. So right. I started a podcast where I interviewed emerging and established digital Folks. creators, and he was one of them. Yeah, <gasps> this is a great interview. It's a small thanks, man. Yeah, after man. all, that's how I got good at this doing the podcast yeah at hosting i don't know how good i am at this so, it's one of those but we'll see it's we'll part. see it's one of those moments where you realize you subconsciously pigeonhole people <laughs> so like i'm like oh shit he does other things really good too <laughs> well, what did you <laughs> what did you pigeonhole me as a, a, just to a guy at much like okay. i just <laughs> i don't know what your goals and just are in a cubicle there's a, a whole category yeah, yeah, yeah. listen i don't know guy what the goals and aspirations are i don't know if you want to be in production Man, I, I, I don't I even didn't know what it was yeah you end fair up enough a show for the cbc like that's your arc that's my CBC. yeah exactly we'll see i don't know i don't really even know that job was fairly unique too like in terms of jobs in, the, in the, like that's a fairly new position in general yeah it was the tail end of multi-channel networks <laughs> yeah and i was an entry-level position at that and yeah. then i feel like the business collapsed yeah <laughs> and i was like okay then we did the podcast yeah Great interview the podcast thank you thank you i see this i learn about the dw thing i'm like what? my mind wait just did going you not like, know i had no idea that's, bro. yes excellent. i had no idea and i then, used to not tell people this is this me is, embracing it. So this is your I'm Batman. I'm Spartan. I am. Exactly. I am DW. <laughs> so let's I am DW. And all, all of the other DWs are like, ah, uh -huh, here we are. I too am Spartacus. <laughs> <laughs> I too. Let's start at the beginning. Like, sure. how does this all start for you? Uh, what, the DW thing? Yes, yeah. Um, 
So my mom was in, uh, she's a long commute to work. Okay. I've heard this story so many times on the podcast. Yes, they yeah. Yeah. so invested. And they need to hear it. They need yeah. to hear it. And, uh, you guys should it's like singing along to my favorite pod. song. I'm like, and then a radio <laughs> Let's broadcast Let's do it. Here we go. On. Okay. And then, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and then a radio <laughs> broadcast <laughs> came on. And then uh, my mom heard an open casting call. And I called in. You know the words. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and then I call it was in. in Montreal. It was in Montreal because nice. I'm based. It, I'm based here, but I'm from Montreal. And then, uh, yeah, it was Tell exactly the Victorian what house. Tell them the Victorian. It was house. an old Victorian <laughs> house. <laughs> I love that part. <laughs> but it was a studio on the inside. You see. <laughs> see, I did my see, what I'm now learning is that you fall asleep to episode one. <laughs> There's no other way you would know it to this detail. No, I binge them all today. It's like repeating. Yes. So I'm repeating like Dexter's lab. I'm yeah. left for much. I'm left for much. <laughs> Just going into your subconscious. Victorian house with a studio inside. Victorian house. <laughs> so no place like home. There's no place like home. So your first, like your first time going in there and yeah. doing this. This is your first time acting in general. Yeah, I'd never done. I mean, never I done was it. 10. Did you consider it acting when you were going? No. You're no. just like it's doing a thing. It's like this. Like I like doing stuff like this. Like I've just always been like. Oh, adventure time. Yeah. Yeah. Like I just like going into situations where I don't really know what's going to happen and oh, let's nice. like try it. And I was like that when I was a kid too. Like I was, I was just excited to try it. Even and more so when you're a kid sometimes. Yeah, because like, you don't really, you know, there's the nothing holding, exactly. Like there's no second guessing, like am I come, come across looking stupid yeah. or, or whatever. But yeah, like I just went in and I spoke into the microphone and they're like, can you pitch up your voice a little bit? And I did. And then they cast me in the room. Wow. So that was just that. right there on the spot. Basically, yeah. Kid, you got it. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of like that. That's amazing. As I was leaving, they like ran up to my mom and were like, you got to get your kid an agent. Like you got to figure all this stuff out. And then they started sending me scripts. Well, and what DW were you? Like I in the line the of the DW. seven, the third DW. DW number three, yeah. DW number three. Yeah. And so you had no like even contact with the previous DW no. at all? No, I only did that. Now doing my podcast. So there was incredible. I, this is, was my thing because I in your in your first episode of your podcast, <laughs> uh, you say that they were giving you the playback tape. Yeah, and you're like, I have to match this person's mm -hmm. voice. Have you not to break into like the content of your podcast? No, but yeah, go for but it. But now that you're looking and talking with all the other DWs across, like you know, the city, the world at this point, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who have you gotten in touch with the first one? Yeah, and what their so, experience was? Yeah, so I I spoke to. I'm trying to speak to them in order. So I've spoken to the like the first one and then the guy who I took over from. Yes. So okay, yeah, right. and those two guys are great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, they had listen, and the, it it made me think because at first you're like, okay, it's a cartoon show, it's a kid playing on a cartoon, it's playtime, like, but it wasn't really playtime for you doing that because like after you, when you're having these conversations with the other DWs, you guys find out that it had a profound like impact on your personal life. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I don't know how much I want to, like, I'm still trying to figure out what that impact yeah. was, though. Like, not to be, like, a shitty interviewee. <laughs> no, good. But, like, I, I was hoping, and I still am, that by talking to these guys, I'm going to figure out, you know, what mm -hmm. the experience did to me. Because I've always had, like, a huge ego and, like, wanted to make it in show business, but didn't really know exactly right. what I wanted to do. Yeah. What that channel would even look like. But I don't remember a time before being DW, so I was, like, did playing DW was that part of the formative time? Yeah, like yeah. Am I, who would I be if I wasn't DW mm. kind of thing? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel like that's indicative of uh, you've spoken to other voice actors? I presume. Do you feel like it's indicative of the industry? For like, you can pin out somebody. You know how like folks who played a sport, they're like, mm -hmm. oh, I always know of somebody else who played the sport <laughs> yeah. off the <laughs> off their characteristics. Yeah. Do you like hear somebody speak in the in the voiceover world where you're like, oh, you've been doing this since you were a kid. Like you're an old pro. I after like maybe they're the way they act or because it's been driven into them from such an early age. I don't know. I think like, so I recently spoke to the guy that plays the father on like David Reed, who's the dad on Arthur and Binky on Arthur. He, it's oh, the same he's guy. Dope. Oh, and nice. he's been, the range. Yeah. <laughs> in age truly. And look, and he's been doing it since the beginning. Like oh, wow. he, a lot of the act, the cast on or Arthur has been there since the beginning of the show. So 25 years just on Arthur alone. <sighs> wow. Right. So wow. he started when he was like my age now and he's in his fifties. And he's been playing the same part That's the whole time. So crazy.
Like he wasn't a father when he started and now he has kids. That's so crazy to me because yeah. like, especially in the acting world, there's always a fear of being typecasted, right? But that can't really exist with voice acting because nobody can. can. Can it? Yeah, because I think you get used to playing certain parts, right? Like, okay. you know, he, he, he can play a dad. That's kind of his normal voice. But like some people just like when they act, have a persona. Mm. It's obviously not the same as like, you know, if you know someone's face is just yeah. this. Like right. Steve Urkel or something like right, that. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't all be Steve Urkel. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Because I know so many different voice actors Although that, we like, wish we could. For example, what's your name? Um, uh, she played all Cree the black... Summers. Cree Summers. Can, uh, Canadian. I'm Canadian we're claiming her. Yeah. <laughs> Torontonian. Torontonian <laughs> Cree Summers. She, like, there's such a range of different black characters that she played. But she was always... Uh, but she was... Always that particular voice and character. I think that's what he's alluding to. I think, well, no, she wasn't because I remember a lot of those characters. Some of them were vastly different. Like some of them were grown, like superhero type people. And some of them were like the little kids, the little black girl that lives next door in Rugrats and stuff like that. Her voice is so iconic, but not her personality. Like she acted differently. Whereas it's not like uh, uh, Michael Sarah, for example, where, you know, you're getting Michael Sarah every movie. You know what I mean? She had she had range. I don't say there's range. I think the range is limited. I think it, if it's limited, it's not of her own doing. I agree. Okay. I'll put it that way. Can I derail this conversation sure, like in a huge way? So people have been asking me like why Arthur matters to a lot of people. And my like canned answer has been like because it reflects the diversity of the world and everyone mm. can see themselves mm. in Arthur. But like I don't really know if that's true. I only know that well, from I talking to people out, in my life. I found out, I feel like people maybe project that a little bit. Yeah. Which is like fine. But I also found out that like all the Arthur characters have like actual countries of origin. Yeah. And like, uh, th- and like religions like and stuff. Yeah. Is there like yeah. a Bible for Arthur? You know how like certain Arthur productions they'll make <laughs> like. <laughs> tales? I mean, they make Bibles for certain. Old Testament, for New certain Testament, <laughs> Arthur Testament. <laughs> the old Testament would be the, the old, older Arthur. DWs. Yeah, That'd be book. amazing. Yo, I'd That'd be, be amazing. That, yeah. The library card book. Leather to Mr. Rapper. <laughs> Yo, dog. That would be lit. And I was like sitting down and thinking to myself too, like what was the unique thing about Arthur that yeah. made me keep going back? Even when I was grown, like. I'm a teenager coming from high school and right. I'm still watching what Arthur religiously. So yeah. What does it make resonate? And it's, it's kind of like magic school bus. You feel like you're learning something without being preached to. Yeah. Yeah. So you know I've I mean? been saying that a lot too. Yeah. yeah. They it's know like how to the, put the, the hidden meaning of the writing where the writing is, I think it's adult enough, but also uh, child friendly. Yeah. yeah. Where the, the message is like, Oh, this is easily just digestible for all ages. Yeah. I mean, I, and I've been, so I've been lucky enough to talk to some writers from Arthur and mm-hmm. like, that's a fully, like, that's a thing. Like the former head writer want, like told people don't write samples, sample scripts that this is very industry. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, uh, no, don't write sample scripts that are, thank you. That are, um, for, ch- for kids shows like just write like write a good show write a good show and like talk about whatever talk about something that happened to you mm-hmm. yeah, yeah and that could be like you know your sister had cancer like that could talk anything like crazy mm. like right or, or hard to deal with topics like i just watched an episode that i did that i don't remember where like dw has to get an ear operation oh yeah i heard about this and it's like you see it. dw fully like they put the gas mask on her and she like they, she like mm-hmm. goes under and like they operate on her and you see a lot of it and it's really crazy for me uh, like right. to think well, there's well, especially been a, for a kid too. Like yeah. you're watching on TVO, you're like, oh wow, this yeah, is, this is dark this is a little bit. We we can go down that path because there's the swearing sure. episode. Yeah, my favorite episode. <laughs> One of the most iconic episodes. Yeah. I have it written down in my notes as a must. <laughs> as a, must ask. a must. Yeah, a must. What First, word do you? What think was the you word? Thank you. I don't That's know. All I want to know. What was that? I feel like the kid was saying bitch, is it but <laughs> it doesn't look like his mouth it was saying. It looks like a two two syllable thing. It looks like he's saying bastard or like I don't even know. Oh, something. There's something else. It's fuck. It has to be fuck. I thought it was fuck. It has. To I be. thought, but it, it was. doesn't fit the context. Yeah, it's, it's, but it doesn't. Like, it, it doesn't have to. You don't. Ha- you're not allowed to do that. And he's just like, oh, you think it's fuck? like fuck? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what I thought it was. <laughs> you think it's like ass? I thought he I said it bitch. can't be. It's got to be something that would like startle. Maybe he said pussy. Person. Thing. It's, it's Maybe a he something power. meaningful. That's two syllables. He was like pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Call his mom a pussy. That's crazy. She calls Grandma Thor. Oh my god. Arthur, God-y. Grandma Thor. <laughs> no. <laughs> Arthur, my what's pussy mean? <laughs> That's Arthur, crazy. <laughs> See, this is how these memes get carried no out. No wonder he dropped this the plane. What, uh, <laughs> like, I would have dropped the plane too. What the heck? Mark, what's pussy me? 
Who are you? What is this child? That's insane. Is that the same episode as The Sopranos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the Sopranos intro, and they pan over to like somebody that with a button. Is the, when you talk about the surgical, yeah. that is the wildest thing crazy. I've ever seen yeah. in animated history. That's hilarious. Bro, it's a Sopranos scene. That it, Sopranos obviously was very popular at the time, so they're just playing yeah. off of it. But they're trying to teach you about the censored. But like, bleep, bleep. So bleep. every time you hear on TV somebody and is they show a guy who's got the button who presses the bleep button, it's because it's, they're saying something you're not supposed to hear. For example, they do a whole soprano scene where the guy's like, I want to fucking deal with this fucking paizon. If you don't tell me where I want to, what did he say? He said something about I want to deal with his cannoli. And the guy's like, what? That's flaccid. Why is why are you talking about <laughs> cannoli? And it's just like so that entire scene was insane to me. Yo, yeah. So I l started looking up, are there more, like, deeper, weird episodes of Arthur? And there's one that actually got banned in Alabama. What is it? Mr. Ratburn. Oh, getting married. Getting, getting married. No, that got banned? They banned it in that's Alabama. Such a, that's a huge bummer. That it, that's what the director said. He's yeah. like, I'm not changing it. I'm very happy with that episode. It's such a, like, not... It's not even like what the episode's about. Mm. Like it's the episode's about Mr. Rapper and getting married. And it's only at the end that you mm. see that it's a, it's to a guy. Yeah. It's like not yeah. a huge deal at all. <laughs> yeah. You know, not, like it's like very it's like you don't you barely see that part. It's like not know? even a, it's not even the content. It's though. totally normalized. Yeah. Like it's just not a big deal. And so yeah. that's a huge bummer. And the thing about it is I remember that discussion. And this is why I talk about Arthur and like just being so polarizing, like on the lowest of keys, like it's so low key polarizing, like to the point where our memes, like your meme, yeah, oh yeah, you're literally a meme because of the Classics. the number of episodes that they have as gifts and different. Me the were you a part of that episode where Arthur's buttoning his pants and people have used that so terribly wrong? He's hopping off the bed. He's off. He, DW's on the bed like this, and he's buttoning up his pants. I can imagine, and it's used in the worst Holy way crap. possible. I it's a lot, of, yeah, a, lot yeah, of yeah. Like, a lot of like I'm leaving for the evening. I understood. <laughs> but have you seen some of the scenes that <laughs> you've <yeah>. done? <laughs> yeah, yeah, was yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> that the when the gay marriage episode happened, I remember it still being like pretty big news. Yeah. Like people were talking about it it's across the internet. Yeah. About Mr. Ratburn being homosexual, and they, everyone's like, ah. Some people are like, yeah, I knew my whole life. Like, some people are like, what was happening? How could they do this in a kid show? How do you feel about Arthur still diving into those like really touchy subjects? I mean, it's always been that way, right? Yeah. Like, I think it's really cool. Like, I think it's important for shows to just reflect real life as much as possible. And it's cool that like a show like Arthur, where it, they they don't need to be that way but they've that they've, they've just that tr chosen to make that part of their dna yeah i mean even when they were developing the show they um one of the people i spoke to was like we built out the city and it just felt too whitewashed and middle class and mm -hmm. so they were like okay we need to make it so that this feels like people are coming from different like socioeconomic yeah. backgrounds and whatever different backgrounds just so it seemed like the world no it really i really felt like i knew which characters were black Yo, which characters I, are black? i swear to you it's buster <laughs> buster's definitely Eh, eh, yeah, Buster, maybe. I'm sorry, Buster's mixed because it's Muffy's mixed. Muffy? Is it? Is it Muffy? No. The, is the it the rich one? Yeah, she's the rich mixed. One. Oh, no, she's Francine's mixed. super black. So Francine's definitely black. Her family's like the Cosbys. It's like modeled after the I, Cosbys almost. But uh, but Francine's also like half Jewish, which is pretty hilarious. I didn't know that until recently. And Joan <laughs> Rivers plays her Bubby. What? Yes, Isn't that I cool? Didn't know this. Right? What? Isn't that crazy? I Joan know. Rivers. Joan Rivers. Oh, she's got to be black then. <laughs> I just feel like Joan Rivers kills in a black room. Does, does she? I'm, I'm sure of it. I'm sure That's of it. It's crazy. that Jewish black connection. Yeah. Finally, you know, so finally coming Drake. together. Midtown Harlem. The first yeah. Drake. <laughs> Francine was the first Drake. <gasps> Damn. Francine. She set the rhythm. See? Wow. Look at, look at what we're unpacking. All I know is for uh, as canon wise. Yeah. Brain is like from West Africa. Really? Yeah. That's the, I remember what, I've seen that. I'm like, what was it? I really did think he was Ethiopian growing up. He gave me big Nigerian vibes. Though. Nigerian. <laughs> he gave me big Nigerian vibes. In the most positive way possible. Because he had to get good grades? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the onus of stress from that household seemed a little tiresome. Oh, my goodness. My so people of Ethiopia are not that type of stringent. <laughs> <laughs> so what's been the most rewarding part about doing this podcast and, and just 
I, I can't imagine the amount of things you're you're finding out along the way. Like, yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, like, it's I try to be pretty open about how I'm just like I feel like I'm having an existential crisis in public, <laughs> nice. like as much as possible because I just want like I'm about to turn thirty. Like, I haven't, I didn't, I'm not where I thought I'd be at thirty, mm-hmm. but I've also like had tons of really cool experiences and like learned a lot, and I I just wanted to see like. I've always kind of hidden the DW thing. Yeah. Like, for example, you didn't know. And I like, yeah. you know, um, I, I wanted to see how far I could get in life without using it right. while still making it in show business. But then I was just like, you know what? Screw it. Like, I know how to make podcasts. I believe in myself as a writer and as mm-hmm. a creator. If I team that up with the DW thing, yeah. I can't I can I can't even imagine how far it'll go. And so far I've been like, it's been pretty fun. And you've been pretty smart about taking on a certain podcast format that is like very palatable for everybody. Very. Like the kind of like murder storyline. Yeah, I, I love like, it. Everybody loves following it because it's in that happy medium of like conversation, also documentation, like documentary-esque. Yeah, also yeah. making so, a murderer. Yeah, it's very <laughs> storyline. <laughs> yeah. I'm, it's kind of inspired by those podcasts. Nice. Like I, I intentionally, like those podcasts are really fun and, and serialized mm-hmm. and I knew I wanted to tell a story like that. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a few podcasts that are in that format, but aren't about murder that mm. I cite more as like, yeah. these are the direct influences, yeah. but yeah, it's, t- it's totally to like that, that on purpose. Kind of so I appreciate you on, saying that. Yeah. Well, it, it, it works well. Like it was <laughs> very, the pace is so great. Thank like, you. That's what I like the Thanks. most about it. I, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts. Yeah. So it's like, I listen for things like that. Like pace is, I think one of the, key factors in me listening longer oh, absolutely. because if it's if it's staggered and all over the place or just moving too quickly i'll get overwhelmed and it's mm-hmm. just just too much especially with this show with so much information being revealed i know it's yeah. like you make you've paced it out so nicely that it's easy to follow and oh, it, you're intrigued even more absolutely. the more Good. you follow and, the, and your your oscillation between narrative structure to interview mm-hmm. is like really great like it's like it sounds like two different people are presenting information. Yeah. So it's like, it makes the show being broken up very nicely. Awesome. I and mean, the music's great. Oh, great thank music you so much. <laughs> yeah. The music is all just royalty free. And it's tough. Hey, it it's, well. it's tough. Not to everybody listen. can put a good royalty free. Royalty free together. music is tough to like find the gems in there. Actually, so I know I hunt for, ge- I can't, I can't deal with that. Library really? at all. I, I hate it. I don't like that's the, cause people keep talking about the music and like, I, I look, I'm not the most knowledgeable about music, but I just trust my taste mm-hmm. and I knew kind of what I wanted to sa- it to sound like, but yeah, anyone could use, like I've heard these songs in, in other, other YouTube places. videos. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. But I'm thinking about reaching out to the band who does like my theme song oh, and just like interviewing yeah. them or, cause I want to do like, I'm starting to think about maybe doing a live show, mm. like <coughs> on episode live. Yes, that'd and be like amazing. it'd be cool to get the band in to do that. To do that, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, that's and then you walk on stage, unplugged. right? Nice. Yeah, exactly. That'd podcast be great. unplugged is like a th- it could be a thing now. Yeah, is that not live podcast? Yeah, podcast unplugged. Some podcast tour, Dead. and like it's apparently it's a good because my my I mean maybe you guys experienced like I don't know how much money you guys make on this, but we like, uh, well with my other podcast we've done tons of live shows. Like it's we did a podcast picnic last year yeah, that was really. Really fun, Riverside. yeah. Riverside, Riverdale, Riverdale Park, yeah, Riverdale that's Park. That's sick. Yeah, it was really fun. Yeah, yeah, I think because that's I think where the money is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, yeah. Shows. If you're gonna make, for, especially with podcasting, it's like and you're not always getting ads, yeah. especially when you're a smaller podcast in between that like two to ten thousand range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it, you're not really seeing the most advertising opportunities. So like you gotta just, especially with merch. Live shows, bonus content, Patreon, yeah. all that stuff. Like you have to use, utilize those for Somebody sure. told me today, like the call that I had before here, why I was late is um, so, someone told me that my podcast would be worth, if I sold it today, it would be worth $375. So that was a moment where I had to be like, all right. Oh. How, did, how, did they, how did they determine <laughs> that? Qu- how, do you, how does one quantify the algorithm? We, we, the, we were talking about like CPM and, okay. and the demo I'm hitting right now. Oh, okay. Because I was aiming to hit a specific person and I'm getting to that yeah. person, right. which is really Very nice. Very easily too. Well, I, I didn't think it would be easy. To be honest, like I thought you'd break the noise because I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a track record as like a creator. Right. Right. So I thought I'd put it out and like three people would listen to like my mom and like, like but it's like that Arthur thing, but I got really lucky with the Toronto star. That was like my first big push. Was it Evie Kwong? Yeah. Evie. Evie She's the only reason why it happened was because we went to school together and I pitched her. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So she's she's the only reason I think that my podcast is getting any attention. That's crazy. Wait, did, did. 
do you know that the season was it was ending? No. So here's what happened. Do you want to hear what happened? This is, this this is the, you hit the universe hyper right here, man. Yeah, so here's what happened. So I was interviewing somebody that I don't want to say, but I was interviewing someone for my podcast, and she told me that the podcast was ending. I'm oh, uh, sorry, that the, the show, show was ending. ending. And I assumed other people knew Nobles. that, right? Like, yeah. I did not know it was a big knowledge. secret. Because... Why would she be telling me that yeah. knowing she's being recorded? Right. You know what I mean? Like, and she's this like awesome, super talented, like important mm-hmm. person who told me this information so, and she didn't say it was a secret. So I figured, well, then this is news. Yeah. This is not even brand new, but I didn't want to, I'm not like a journalist. I didn't want to like break a story. Like that's not what I'm set <laughs> out here to do. <laughs> so I just left it in plan. and I said it in the podcast expecting no one to listen. Mm. And then now I'm cited as like the person who broke, broke the, news. the news. Oh, <laughs> so that's where I am. Oh, that's but, beautiful. But does it, don't you love when a plan comes together? Look at it. Don't <laughs> you? A team shit. <laughs> don't you love when a plan comes together? Well, we I, need a cigar. We need a cigar. I, yeah. I, what I think is like, I'm just, I'm just getting lucky. Like I mm. don't, cause like I'm working really hard, but it's not a guarantee. Like just cause you put in work, luck, man, this is fate. There's too much. There's too much. I'm riding some. At, there's there's fate too much wave. happening at the same time. Too much right. Listen, Whenever there's too much right in different places happening at once, I get once, suspicious when that happens. They ended the show two years ago. What are the odds that the news would that the news, news would break? This? My, Come on! Like I can't. It's funny that you thought I was like a plug. That I was like the. Uh, I thought there was at least some sort of collaboration. There is isn't. Capacity, there which isn't. is the best part. Yeah. Like that's that, insane. That should drive more people to be like, oh, this is like independent yeah. of everything. Oh, it's like an expose. Oh well, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the Arthur yeah, expose. I'm a Arthur canceled. behind the curtain, darker than you would think. It's like, just this shit. <laughs> <laughs> the Who's Arthur this? Fist? Was that all along? I was actually Reading Arthur two read. years ago for Halloween. I just that's remembered a great that. name for a podcast what about heck? Arthur. I just remembered I was Arthur for like two years ago for Halloween. Oh, wow. I just when everybody did that. the fist, of course. Yeah. No, no, it was like two years after everybody did the fist. I was Mad, mad late. I had one yellow sweater. I'm like, perfect. I don't know what I am. Arthur. You got all the, I am you got all the sale ears. You're like, yeah, we got <laughs> yeah. the clo- He opens a closet. And <laughs> just full of ears. I literally just had the clothes on. That's it. I did nothing else to be Arthur. That's interesting. So, my, my question is this yeah. a good point that you make in your podcast is uh-huh. that most of the folks who've played, the, uh, most all of them oh. have been guys. Yeah. And what kind of shared experiences do you have? You uncovered some sort of like okay. consistent truth yet that you're like, was it just easier? Were there just more voice actors that happened to be guys that happened to be drawn to playing the raspiness of DW? Well, I think there's two questions there. So it's it, what was the experience like for all the guys and, and mm-hmm. why was it a guy? And like... There's, yeah, there's two in there. Yeah, so so I think it affected us all in different ways. Right. And I think the best example of that is the first guy who played DW and the second guy who played DW. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Vastly different people. Just they're, could, they're like two completely polarized like different it's crazy and like when you hear them talk you really get a feel for that right. and, and i think it's funny that they have this shared experience but if you met them today yeah. you would never imagine <laughs> that they're linked in things. any yeah. way let yeah. alone that this is the way that they're connected that's crazy i think that like someone like me it kind of makes more sense mm-hmm. that like i would be doing something in the industry just based on capacity yeah, yeah right like maybe not podcasting but something something mm-hmm. yeah and then the further further down the line you go, I think the younger people who played DW or the more people played DW more recently mm-hmm. sort of have dealt with it better or like it's easier for them to like walk away and mm-hmm. do something else or uh, they've become like really good actors or whatever. It like was part of their career. Part step. of the journey. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Like the one, the guy who ca- who played DW after me, Robert Naylor is like a successful, legit actor. Legit yeah. actor. Yeah. yeah. Like works a ton in Montreal in English and French. Okay. And he's the in, one like, person that had the same shared experience as you. Yeah. But he's the, o- he's the only one that, he, no, the, the kid who's current, who was most recently DW, is also an actor, but he's 14 now. Mm. He was in like Shazam and stuff. Like, he's oh, like a okay. real oh, actor, okay. too. Nice. No kidding. Yeah. So, like, we'll see what happens, obviously. He's right. 14. But he, like, I was but not I able just, to do anything. As when opposed I was, to kind of yeah. you guys getting cold called in or like being like kind of like a maybe a force forward in the industry for the younger actors, it's like part of their, their CV now. Yeah. And like, whereas for me, it's like my career very much is like bookended by that. Right experience. Mm. Like I did a couple things after, but that's really it in terms of talent. Yeah. And then like, why is it guys is just the first, the first person they cast happened to be what they thought DW sounded like. Mm -hmm. And I think they were always just trying to match that person. And they tried to like, you know, like, I don't know what the term is, but it's like, they would play like five different selects, let's say. 
and one of them was a girl. And they would inevitably and always choose the just the oh, guy voice. Wow. So it's, I don't think it's more complicated. <coughs> it's just what the it wasn't even, yeah. bi- it wasn't even biased at some points. Yeah, though. they were yeah, just like, just let's just try whatever and we'll just pick it. sounds like this yeah. and we're looking for the exactly. person who can say it the best. Yeah, and I think that's un- like that's part of the narrative that like a lo- I've seen online a lot. Like I've, I've seen some hate for, like the it, yeah. anti, like you know, the taking away like a part Jobs from a from girl because everybody's yeah. like very much like a DW is also like a girl boss champion. And I'm trying to like I put that out there as mm-hmm. much as I can. Like I think that's true. I think like DW is an awesome role model. Uh, it's uh, it's 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 not right to direct that hate towards you uh, to though. The actor, I mean, you are a like, child. You know what I mean? To, to, just to like like to. Um, clarify what i mean like it's not like people are like fuck you you oh, piece okay. of shit like it's just like in the comments it's like wow another like boring white guy talking about right. whatever and it's like i get it at a certain sure. point but i'm also like i'm out here busting my ass <laughs> just trying to make a podcast I'm like doing a thing. you don't have to like it it's exactly. fine like i get it people I understand you know you know the i think there's is. detractors for anything but yeah you got, but you're if people took the time to listen they'll appreciate how I guess deeply interesting a topic that seems very like surface level. Yeah, is actually so like far so more layered. Oh, I'm trying. Yeah, so good. I don't think I'm strong enough to, a writer to get where I really want to go with it because I want to get more into like like the psychology of like because like I'm saying like people reacted differently. Right. But like I was bullied for playing a girl character. I, I wanted imagine. to ask. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like other people were, but the people who played DW more recently, like they're little to thing. no bullying. Mm. So it's like cool to see that like the world has changed and people mm-hmm. are better. But, like, the psychology of that, I think, would be fun to talk about. Definitely. But I don't know that I'm, I don't know that I'm, I have the tools to do it properly. Like, I feel like I could make it some sort of, like, fun, cool, like, queer narrative where I explore mm-hmm. stuff. But I don't think I'm the right person to Maybe do Maybe get it. a therapist and did, and talk to Just the get a therapist in the general. <laughs> like, you are super <laughs> fun. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, who, that's why you brought me here. <laughs> the We're same, yeah. Yeah. Phyllis. <laughs> no, but what you need to do is adjust your power. <laughs> no, but get it. it I, I love podcast episodes where they talk to a therapist about whatever the podcast is centered around. Yeah, just especially one that's like unbiased, that's never heard your story before, because it's just like it's just another ear to get a, a different perspective, especially yeah. someone who's maybe dealt with actor child actors before because i know that that world regardless of his voice acting mm-hmm. or whatever just like you said you were like harassed for playing a girl i'm pretty sure deeper than that is harassment for doing something so cool maybe i i it was definitely hard to see it that way at the time yeah yeah <laughs> now, Somebody, someone's kicking your ass yeah it's really hard to be like okay I well oh, <laughs> you're woes you're you're hating me because you hate me oh oh, oh you mad i forgive you <laughs> yeah the one the one D- guy who played dw that really like kind of shook me up he's like 19 years old and he's like i'm in university now and if people try to hate on me i'm like well, I'm set up. Like I've I've I'm got fine. money in the bank. Like I don't have student loans like you. Like yeah. fuck off. And I'm like, wow, that's crazy. Like, <laughs> that's, <laughs> I can't imagine ever why saying that to that? another person. <laughs> that's, that's a no, post, that's a path how to am take. I gonna, like, why would I ever? I don't know. I'm just not that kind of person. That's just a weird. And to me, that that's weird. so foreign to be like, yeah. I've got money in the bank, therefore I'm better than you. Yeah, no, that's, like, that's, yeah, that's crazy a nuts to thing me. to retort. That's to a wild thing. Yeah. But I feel like everybody shows people knows where they're worth, can. where they think they're worth. Yeah, but for lies. the record, I think that the guy that said that is totally right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I we, wish I could be that way, but it's just not. Two things who I can am. be true. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I guess maybe the more important, I mean, not important, but like <laughs> inter- more pertinent question right yeah. now is the podcast is doing really well. Yeah, it's exploring. You may run out of DWs eventually. Yes, I like. Yeah. what's like the plan for growing the conversation? I, I or is there just like I just want to run out of the DW? I really don't know. That's the truth. Like, look, I started. I had a like I I had a few in the bank already. Yeah. And then when I started releasing episodes, a guy reached out and was like, "No way! I can't believe there's more of us." And I was like, "Who the a fuck cult? are you?" <laughs> yeah, no, DW called. No, it was another person who more was not on any of my lists. Wow. Just just another guy wow. who did DW for you know how Arthur split up into two ten minute chunks. Yes. yes. He was DW for like. One episode, like one chunk. The one 10 minute chunk. One 10 minute. Like even the episode he's in, he's not credited for. Wow. It's like Robert. He was a bench. He was a bench. DW. He was a bench. D- this is, I'm giving you a scoop. This is People so don't know was this. That, why, why was, what was the reasoning Exclusive. behind it? This isn't, ex- I haven't told anybody this. So, <laughs> wait a minute. So there's a mystery DW. Yeah. How, and, and they've reached out to you given the, the yeah. 
Yes, that's why I don't know. Did you guys meet in a parking garage? Yeah. <laughs> he like shows me. He has the DW card. <laughs> do the, do the voice. Yeah, do we always see a DW. No, no. Do the voice. It? Do the voice so I know it's you. <laughs> and it goes into like a modulator. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, all right, we got him. Phyllis, <laughs> Phyllis, you're here, right? Come on, <laughs> come on that's hilarious. That's crazy. Yeah, so that's why when I'm like, I don't know. Do you suspect there's more? I, look, there's I don't. I never. Actors? I don't think so. <laughs> Hidden Arthur. I don't think so, but you never know. I think you just got. I think you just, just got to move on to different characters after that. So that's the thing, right? It's like, how much do I milk this? Do you go for? It's like, do I do a, f like, I'm not, I, I never, I didn't want to do like a finding Arthur thing. Mm. Although I do want to talk to one Arthur in particular. Ooh. I don't know his name, but I, there's someone I want to talk to. Um, but yeah, I don't want to milk this thing for all it's worth. Would I kind of just want it to be this like one this thing. This one contained thing. And then like, maybe wanna, I can like, do like. The universe of it. Of, like, yeah. And like, I, I do want to move on from finding like. Finding TJ Detweiler. From yeah. Well, that's what I want to do is I want to, I want to like interview. I was thinking about it as like an unofficial sequel. It'd be cool See to like. See circle. Yeah. It'd be cool to interview like voice actors from other cartoons. Cause like I was a voice actor on a cartoon. I yeah. could like ask cool questions. Yeah, right. that'd be so sick. Yeah. That'd be so sick. The, I watched because the, there's so much. There's, there's so that much Netflix documentary where they, yeah. they like to know spoke where they to the. Up to. Um, like, I really want to interview the guy who played Optimus Prime. Crazy. Oh, he's from Montreal. His name's Peter what? Cullen. I know he voiced Optimus Prime in the '80s, and, and then in the like modern day movies? and in all the Michael Bay movies. It's the same guy. <laughs> he's yeah. like seventy. That's so crazy. Or like, or like, I seen uh, like a small clip of him, and I was just shocked. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I was and shocked. Like, there's a guy who, uh, like, the guy who voiced Goku. Like, I'd love to interview oh. him. Oh. His name is Sean something. It's like Sean, and then another Sh Parker. Yeah, AKA Sean Parker, yeah. the creator of Napster. <laughs> Sean Schmendeman. Yeah, it's Sean Schmendeman. It's Goku. <laughs> yeah, but like but people like that, you know. Yeah. Like I, so I, that's. But I'm like, I'm at a weird point where I'm like toying with how do I finish this strong and what right. do I do next. Mm. Like that's what has been really challenging is like how do I finish the episodes so they keep coming out every Tuesday and then an extra one every Wednesday. Like I don't know how you do this like truly <laughs> like it doesn't make I, any I'm sense i'm luckily to me. working with a broader palette <laughs> like you you gotta stick to the the niche right no no but it's just like a matter of like the, the of scheduling amount first. of content that oh. you put out yeah no. that's what because like i'm like i can't like i took so i like pay my bills doing other like part-time mm -hmm. jobs and like this this week and last week i took off completely just, just to, to focus on this yeah because i literally couldn't handle the incoming amount of like opportunities to do things like yeah. this or press, like yeah. press stuff which i know is important yeah and it's like i i know it'll help me grow the thing but then it's like okay why am i growing the thing like what's the goal like right. am i trying to sell the thing which again 375 dollars <laughs> so burning a hole in your pocket. yeah it's like maybe <laughs> but then it's also like okay i started a patreon because like why the fuck not and now it's like almost 200 dollars, which is like uh, way oh, more wait, wait, than wait, I expected wait. it yeah. to be. Yeah. But then also like, okay, I finished Finding DW, like goodbye, $200. Thanks, Thanks so much for coming. A month, like that would be so fun. Yeah. Because then it's like, I only have to make X amount right. to live. Makes, well, the thing about- It extends everything. Yeah. yeah. The right. thing about Patreon members is they're buying into you. They're but, not necessarily buying. They're, yeah, they love the content, obviously, but you can love content and not- you don't have to. Pay I know, for it. but I branded it as fine as uh, this is. Is this interesting? Like, yeah, <laughs> okay. I hope so. Yeah. It's definitely interesting. Uh, this We're is interested. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like and subscribe. Uh, finding D it's it's patreon.com finding dw. Mm. So it's brand it's branded as that. I'll put it under the thing. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Well. Anyways, Click so here. I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> I think there's an ability to obviously grow it in that way, but I also think that you benefit from being a very strong podcaster. Thank not you. to like you know wax your car over here. No, please uh, wax away. I need it. Just, <laughs> but I, it, it would be different if you're the 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 strength of the podcast is exclusively the content. I think you're a good presenter and a good interviewer. Yeah, I think you can grow that into so many things as yeah. well. Yeah, that's my hope. Like I always, it could just be mysteries of other mysteries. Like yeah, like more like TV show based mysteries. I love the idea of just a, myth, a podcast about mysteries. And just, it's just like mysteries about mysteries. mysteries. They're yeah. so great. They're right. always great. They yeah. can't miss. And then why did we forget about this mystery? Exactly. It's a mystery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a mystery within a mystery. That's, That's the crazy. mystery. That's, <laughs> mystery. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, no. That would be, I think you could, you can go any direction you want after this. Yeah. We'll see. Like, I, I really do want to host something, but like, I also like, in my life would very much like to write a movie and like direct a movie. Yeah. yeah. 
Like, I don't know if I want to like be a director, but I want to like have that experience right. from start to finish mm. in some capacity. Yeah, but also it would be like. I don't know what's going to happen. Because again, like w- when I was younger, I would have thought I was be at a certain place mm-hmm. and I'm not. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I don't, I don't really have a goal anymore. I'm just working as hard as I can just and we'll it, see. You just want to complete bunch yeah. of the tape on this. Exactly. Thing. Yeah. Definitely. Will you be sad once you get to the end of the DW <coughs> era? I, it, like the idea of this ending is terrifying because I've had this idea for so long and like I always have ideas and like run halfway through them and then stop. Right. Mm-hmm. So this will be the first time that I finish something like this. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what is that going to feel like when it's done? Like when I, it's, I don't it's know. This thing that you've had in the back of your mind yeah. for so long. Like what's exactly? How do you occupy <coughs> that space again? Yeah. Or like, what the hell do I do after that? Yeah. 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 How do you follow it up? Because since it's done so well, you're like, oh, it's also have to. Do yeah, I have to follow something. Yeah. That's oh, the God. tough part about show business in general, right? Yeah. It's like following up the the baby, the first baby that you have. Yeah. I don't know. So we'll <laughs> see. Like I, I don't. I really don't know. Like I hope I can you know, like continue right. using my like trusting myself the way that I did with this idea. Of course. But I really have no idea what's going to happen. Mm. Yeah. yeah and we don't know what's going to happen with Arthur after like it's also done. Also that, yeah, cuz there might be a resurgence in some capacity. Like what I'm hoping. Like I think best case scenario is so like I've been credited as breaking the story. W- like what if the show gets like revamped and I'm credited as saving uh, the saving show? the show. That's what like the best mm. case scenario would be that, right? Because Great there notes. is a big backlash against the like, show. People canceling. are pissed. <laughs> I was pissed because first of all, I was like, okay, maybe ratings went down. Ratings are not down. No. So I'm like, because it's still like canon content and for it's like, like kids, and now. it's like maybe maybe the audience grew up. False. Oh, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> so many. Not. Like we are all we children are all st- still. Yeah, we're Everyone all still here. This we're table. still there. <laughs> but even it's still doing numbers with the youth. Uh, like the I new know, youth too. It's like crazy. Yeah. I was talking to uh, my neighbor's kid, and they're like, "Yeah, Arthur's coming on." I was like, "You still wait? Arthur's still what? On the oh, it must be like reruns." That. But no, I thought it was just a different show. I, like, yeah. It's not my Arthur. Greatest episode would be talking to um, it was a Ziggy. I want to talk to Ziggy. Ziggy I want to talk Marley to Ziggy, would be and I want incredible. to talk to Chance. Mm. Because Ch- but like Chance's version was crazy. I would love to talk. to I Chance. I love that version. Yeah. I've been trying to talk to him, but again, like, and uh, anyways. See, look at that. Even Chance the rapper grows up, makes an Arthur song. Well, he's like, a, he's because I assume we're all kind of yeah. the same age or close. Yeah, and like he's he's like our age. Yeah, he grew up mm-hmm. with so it. Makes like sense. Us. But yeah, like I, it would be so fun. That's like part of it, right? Like I know I have an, a huge ego because I know like LeBron James shared a DW meme. Therefore, I can I mean, talk to LeBron James. <laughs> Facts. This is my. That's in, how the internet right? works. So then, as long as I'm like researched and like you know well prepared, well prepared, yeah. I could give a meaningful interview to LeBron James, and that's my in. And that's always sort you of need been a my mentality. Publicist that's gonna work for you for free. I know. <laughs> if you got a publicist like, that's willing to just like just grind, grind just at first, I think it's like out of here. But because yeah. ha- these are the conversations I'm having right yeah. now. It's like, what do we do? Oh, you have no money. Oh, okay. Okay. Or like this opportunity. Well, there's no money for like. It's just hard to balance. Yep. It's to hard to even know what to do. Execute. Yeah. Yeah. The best advice I've gotten is just put your head down and work. Like that was the call I just had, where mm. the guy was just like, "Don't just do yeah. it. Make it the yeah. best it can be, and we'll see." Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I feel like there's there's definitely a couple ways it could like just get repurposed or just extended at least. Like I would not if I saw that come up on Netflix, just a thumbnail finding DW. I'm clicking that That's, right away. There's no question about it. But the thing is, it's like getting the rights from the show to be able to use the imagery. Well, it becomes such a bigger task. It, yeah, it's like you gotta you gotta get a studio that believes in you. And then willing to put up the money up front to get it all yeah. done and then know that it's going to be recouped. Which is ultimately why I did a podcast. Because mm-hmm. I was like, it's just the lowest stakes is just yeah, audio. Yeah, no. Maintenance is real low on it. And, and I it's don't a have capsule. To, it's a yeah, capsule exactly. now. Yeah, exactly. And like, it's on, somebody put it on IMDb though, which is really hilarious. Oh, wow. And so I'm credited as like creator, producer, this, and I'm like, yes, <laughs> finally. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> no, I want that more for, especially for podcasts, small timer creators. Podcast yeah, small time creators, like, we wear so many hats, people yeah. would have no idea. And we, some of us have no idea that oh, we're wearing yeah. so many hats. Like, so many people don't realize they're doing production, they're doing directing, they're writing, they're editing. Like, those are four different salaries. Mm-hmm. Totally. <laughs> like yeah. You're, yeah. you're, you're coming in for jobs. none of the salary. <laughs> none of them. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. I, I just want, there's gotta be just more respect on smaller creators because I, I understand that it is obviously a, Fairly, fairly new. We're in our infant, infancy with oh, I'm digital a, I'm creators. A baby, yeah, and <laughs> just in general, just in digital creation like in general, it's like general. what? Yeah. Not even been twenty years yet, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I think twenty years of being generous. 
Pardon me? I think 20 years would be even generous. I said, no, not even 20 years. Yeah. It's like pff, close to like 13, maybe mm -hmm. 13, 14. So with that, we there's a lot of stuff that like it's just super annoying to deal with and you don't get to use it as a credit because of you didn't have this name behind you or right. this, you didn't have HR. Like, you know right. what I mean? No, like, yeah. Yeah. HR is what I'm just, yeah. <laughs> That's what's I just need, I just need like a lady. Phyllis? <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that. Phyllis, come on. Phyllis doubles is she HR. She our HR slash therapy. Uh, yeah. Like that's the thing I thought up until today that like, oh, all I'm missing is that like cosign from iHeart. But mm. now I'm just like, no, that's probably not true. Like, I don't think there's, I don't, I don't think there's a button or like a, a magic machine way to do I could it. be in. Like, yeah. I think it's just like, if this is meant to hit, it's meant to hit. And like, if it's meant to be a calling card, then that's what it'll yeah. do. Right. Like yeah. I'm, I've had already opportunities. I never thought I would have just right. from just this, this in the last like day. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the last 20, 48 hours have been insane. Right. So like, we'll see. And why not? I guess why not grow the brand and then just be part of like the catalog of things that like of the diversity of things that can happen and can be done. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh yeah. yeah. And oh, by the way, we did like a really great podcast that one time and like, uh, but other things. Yeah. So that's always an option too. That's like my hope is that I build like kind of my own brand mm -hmm. through it. Yeah. Well, that's fine. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Should we like run through like th 30 seconds of, TV news? Oh, I thought you were going to ask me to do the voice for 30 seconds. I was very scared. No, I just feel like... <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, I don't want worried. that to happen. <laughs> I was no, very worried. That sounds so I was terrifying. worried to stay away from that for so long. People... Like, people... Yeah. Want you to use the voice. Speaking you know? about that, how many... Like, they, I find that with entertainers, like, there's, there comes a point where people start just looking at you as entertainment and yeah. not as, like, a yeah, human yeah, dance, being. Dance, dance. Yeah. yeah and we're I mean, we've talked about that a lot. Yeah. Like, I talked about that a lot with a lot of the DWs. Mm. So it's, like, you're sort of viewed as, like, a commodity. And you have, like, your canon line. Like your I had mine, and he had his can. Uh, Robert had his mm -hmm. canned line. Um, but, yeah, it's it's weird. I think, in a way, that's part of why, like, I'm, like, having this, like, crisis because, like, I, people saw me as, like, just the DW yeah. guy. And so in my mind, I was like, who am I? What else? Yeah. This, you know? And it was at that time where you're like trying to figure out of course, like life in general. Yeah. yeah like you're, yeah, it's you're going very, out for the yeah. first time. You're like, you know, you're like going on a date for the first time. You're going to some school dance or whatever. Yeah. And all the while it's like people chasing me down the halls, like do the voice. Do the voice, do the voice. It's really hard to figure yeah. out like who you are. Right. Yeah. At least I found it hard. And so like. When the, that's like the thing that everybody. Yeah. Kind of and it's like, well, I'm, I'm, I've got to be someone outside of that. Like mm. I have to be. Yeah. So. And then maybe that, that taps into your inner desire of just growing and being someone in show business yeah just like having an identity outside of it right like yeah that's why it's important to me that like this podcast sh like that people s get hooked in from the dw thing but they stick around because it's like oh shit like There's more interesting things to be said i've learned how to be a good storyteller and, a, and an audio director yeah. sound yeah. i didn't know i was a sound good at sound design but the store like but uh, assembling good. all the things yeah. it sounds good yeah. yeah so i don't know yeah that's the thing it's like Especially going back to small creators again, it's like you yeah. gotta gotta work your way out of whatever people first saw you totally. as. Totally, it's it's a weird journey in yeah. and of itself. It's like completely separate from what you do, but not at all. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like it's very confusing to try to like outgrow that and prove to people that you're human. <laughs> <laughs> like I gotta I prove, hey. I wash dishes like, yo, I'm like you. Like, I got to <laughs> prove that. What I, I got to do is start vlogs. <laughs> we're all trying to prove that we're human. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, on some level. Yeah, on yeah. some level, yeah. yeah. human condition. What you <laughs> Phyllis. <laughs> Get in here. You clear this up. Surprise. <laughs> oh, you know, it's it's you so <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, did yeah, you, there's. Do we want to wrap up with like? Let's th let's get into our, some happening. of our it's normal. Like just oh, have we been recording this whole time? Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, shit. Yeah. Or can you press play? Please? Yeah. <laughs> here Let's get into some of our just rapid fire of the. Do you uh, want to start the show? TV. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm Marlon. Welcome to the concession <laughs> stand. Welcome to the concession um, stand. I'm Jason. Welcome to the concession <laughs> stand. <laughs> we have listen. Love Island's been killing it. I'm just gonna put are that you out Love there. Island person? I know you guys are not dating no. reality show people, but hey, man. It's Season a, three, crazy? U.S. Yeah. Do, they have, do, they have, do they have destinations like Survivor? Destinations as in like, like challenges? Like Love Island. Oh, yeah. Morocco. Yeah. Yeah. So Love Islands? Island is actually running, what's the word when it's Love all Island at the same Morocco's time? Worse. Concurrently. <laughs> Concurrently in 21 countries. 
Oh, yeah. So they have like country like American Idol types. Like Love Island Nigeria exists, Love Island Australia. It started and is popularized in the UK. Man, the Love Island people, that's how you really make that's money. Just, if there's a concession stand in all of the places just also, stamp it you guys would make so everywhere. much, trust yeah. me. Apparently they wanted to do that with The Office. Like they, An like, office in like every country? Yeah, just like, uh, but like different, yeah, different companies, different like locations, different types of companies. But that's just, that's the interface would hate it. I think that's the thing about, about The Office though. Because it felt you like by the end, he like resented Steve Carell. Oh <laughs> no, like, I think that was a bit. I think yeah, he, I he think was full Ricky bit. Ricky Gervais oh, loves really? being rich. Yeah, no, that was definitely a yeah, bit. He kept he, that going for way too long. He loves. It was like Jimmy Kimmel and Matt Damon. It's like that's not for real. Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think Ricky <laughs> loves being rich. You think it was a bit smug? <laughs> no, because I saw an interview with Martin Freeman, who's in the original office. Yeah, he's yeah. he's Tim. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he was like talking about. He's like, yeah, I didn't watch it for a while, and then I got to it, and it was really good. But the way I'm like, I don't know if he really loved it like that. I feel like if I was a part of something, especially like non-US content, mm-hmm. they're very protective over like their content just like yeah. use our content. You don't have to Americanize it. Yeah. I feel like I would still feel away mm-hmm. if that was the case. I feel like no Maybe matter what me. country you put it in though, it's gonna be the office regardless. Like if you put that anywhere else, the office is the, the reason why it appealed to so many people is because it's like this is every office. I would ever. love yeah. to watch <laughs> the office Tokyo and uh, and the office Nigeria. North Korea. Oh, okay. That'd be hilarious. Nigeria. Okay. Like, n- nobody has a character. Nothing's <laughs> happening. <laughs> Everyone's just doing their job. Just a typewriter going. It's <laughs> a show about efficiency. Feel it? Get me out of here. HR Phyllis. <laughs> pull a plug. <laughs> oh, man. Um, uh, the Scarlett Johansson news. Yeah, I was reading about that. Pretty wild. Yeah, that's um, pretty crazy. They basically told her and put in her contract that it would only be a theatrical release. They forgot, forgo, whatever. Yeah, forwent. Forwent that and just decide to pop it on uh, Disney+. Plus. Well, I was shocked when I saw well, it on Disney+. Plus. So but it's not, it's behind the paywall still. They give to pay... I think they drew yeah, but the thing is of like ticket sales. No, yeah, unless because she's getting if she's getting a percentage of tickets, sales yeah, her contract exactly. Right, that's the problem. Is like she's missing out on a chunk of money because of the fact that they never wrote that into well, her contract. Christopher Nolan was pissed about Tenant or something <laughs> to that effect of like what happened about him going first uh-huh. and other studios holding back their movies and like, but not like him filming release. it. He's not mad about that. Well, of course, I mean he he's should not, be mad. He about should be mad about filming movie. it. Horrible. Uh, but he was like talking shit about like Paramount and Universal, and he's like, "Fuck those guys! Those guys ruined me." Wow! Like, uh, if you really want to take your shit to a real studio, <laughs> oh my god, like, he, he ignited talking, them. <laughs> well, he was talking a lot of smack about like they ruined how movies are going to be released because they're like piecemealing it out to the public, mm. digital wise. I, I don't know. I feel Sorry, like, sir, we're in a pandemic. Yeah, I feel like the world's changing. It's like it's, it, I, and I thought I saw that and people are already going towards the stream anyway. Yeah, I saw people. It makes I, sense. I saw people getting at her about that as well. Like, oh, we're in a pandemic. Would you expect and blah blah? blah. It's like. Yeah, at first it, the optics are crazy, but give the woman what she's owed. I feel That's like that's the if, thing. I'm like, if you, if I like, I'd be pissed if I lost a ton, a ton of money, even uh, if I'm like Scarlett Johansson money. Still, but that's part of the your contract. I mean, there's I guess but they lied. They lied. Oh. It's they said it wasn't going on streaming. It'd be theatrical theatrical release exclusively. Yeah. So that's why she oh, said, so okay, so I want points on reason. that. And then they just said eh, Disney Plus. <laughs> Disney, Plus. Uh, Disney, Plus. Disney Plus isn't streaming It is theatrical in your home <laughs> It's not streaming if your Wi-Fi is bad um, But yeah, no, that's I mean, going after Disney though Is that Disney Plus. Is that a They'll kill you with attrition Like they'll be like, we'll just bleed you for a hundred years yeah, This is like my thing It's like, people. is it wise for I, I get that maybe Somebody Disney's probably wiser. done this Before I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't put not it past before, them. Well, there's not to, nothing to be streamed, but they've they have a long history of screwing actors over for their. Oh, do they? Robin Williams and the Aladdin. In the Aladdin. In, in the Aladdin. <laughs> in Aladdin, <laughs> the genie play. character. Yeah, <laughs> like you got screwed was, out of money for that. Well, they only they pulled them off set from another movie that he wanted to make, mm-hmm. playing like a, an Ala- a genie esque character type, fast mm-hmm. talking. They they told him if you do this one movie, don't worry about it, and you don't have to bother with us and so they got him to do it mm-hmm. squished the release of that other movie that he wanted to do okay by l- releasing it before damn mm. and then when he was like i don't want to come back again they're like no well 
we'll beat you up about the contract. So they battled him on the contract, brought him back again. He's like, I don't want to be in any TV shows or games. They're like, no, we'll just strip your voice from the movie and put it in the game. Oh, damn. They and did do that. Robin Williams, the most lovely guy in the get, world. He didn't get paid for like video game stuff? He didn't get added back. And to that the game was huge. Of course. The, the Super Nintendo, Nintendo one? Huge yeah, 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 game yeah. at the time. Oh, I remember that flying carpet really part. Ooh. Yeah. So I'm just saying I feel bad for Scarlett because she's going to get like... Disney's Disney's Satan. This is the thing. It's Disney's bullying. Essentially, Amazon. this is bullying. It's like I know I'm bigger than you. We control a lot, and we're gonna do what we want. And you get you can say what you want about it, but it's like at the end of the day, Disney's, opportunities might just get Disney's less. Disney's worse than Thanos. They're like they're they're <laughs> they're inevitable. Like Disney for real. Disney is Thanos. Thanos is Disney. Yeah. In a way, Facts. so it's all well, it's you gotta all watch out for the mouse, man. Did you hear about? <laughs> did the you mouse guys come the for house you? Mouse. House of Mouse is here. The house of Mouse. Did you guys hear about um, the fact that why they made Frozen? Frozen. Why? Let it go. Let it go. The movie yeah, Frozen. Yeah, Wait, what? Do you, why they why made, they made yeah. it? The, did you, you guys never heard the reasoning That's behind it? Say. No, it's actually to hide search results of Walt Disney being cryogenically frozen. What? All right. All right. That we, sounds. Do, that do sounds we, from. That sounds Joe Rogan tin tin hat. Do we have enough time for this? <laughs> to How much in? time do we have? It's a new mystery. It's a new series. It's a new mystery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for coming through, man. Really oh, great. Man. Thanks. For Make sure you guys check uh, out the podcast, uh, Finding DW. It is incredible. Oh, like man. we said, it is really good stuff. Yeah, Thank really you. good. Thank you so really much. Really good. I never thought a topic like that would get so layered and just interesting is really really dope yeah well it's a it's an enjoyable listen over something that we all care about and know about but like like to learn more well thank okay. you very much for having me and i appreciate that you guys like it <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up man yeah. thank you guys for watching a i'm pleasure. marlon i'm gay and that was a concession stand peace deuces deuces